It's been just about four decades since professional baseball left Panama City. The original Panama City team arrived in 1936 and changed names several times from the Papermakers, the Pilots, and the Pelicans. That team folded in 1939, but the nation's pastime was reestablished in 1951 as the Panama City Flyers. It was a pre-television, pre-air-conditioned era when what happened on a Summer's Eve baseball diamond would be the stuff of the next day's conversation. It was the Class D Alabama Florida League, a professional league which consisted of cities that were hardly more than villages. It was a fun year, a lot of good guys, and uh, you know, you didn't care where you played, what kind of field it was or anything like that. As long as you were playing professional baseball, didn't make any difference. Former Flyers second baseman and current Atlanta Braves manager Bobby Cox played in Panama City in 1961. But the heyday for the PC Flyers was the summer of 1955 when they won the Alabama Florida League title. But former Panama City ball player Bill Brightwell's recollection of the old days weren't collided by those romantic boyhood dreams. We had an old bus and the bus was terrible. They stay broke down half the time. The locker room had one little bench in it and some nails on the wall. That was your, <laughs> your locker. So it wasn't the best conditions, but it was fun. This parking lot was once the spot reserved for Old Lions Park, but now at the corner of US 231 and 77, the county water tower sits in right field while this strip mall occupies the infield. Lions Park was a very, very good playing field. It was not good stands. Uh, the players' dressing room was not that good, but the playing field itself was excellent. I remember hitting one over the uh, the center field wall, which was about four. I think it was 434, and I got one up. That wind was blowing. It had to be. Bill Taller, the city clerk of Cedar Grove, said he spent most of his summer nights as a boy at Lions Park. If they foul the ball over the fence, if you brought the ball back in, they'd give you free admission. He and his friends couldn't afford to get into the ballpark, so they would either jump the fence or gather foul balls. We sat out there behind the backstop, and you know, when they foul the ball off, it'd come out of those lights, and when it got in the dark, you could just see that white ball, just like it was, you know, a, about something coming from outer space. You see it leave the lights, and boom, there it was, and then, boy, we take off running to get it. 1955 was the peak of baseball in Panama City. The team reached the 500 level just once more before the final year of existence in 1961. One year after the Flyers folded, so did the entire Alabama Florida League. 55 television had just hit this area. I don't believe that Babe Ruth would have drawn out there then. And the Panhandle has not seen pro baseball ever since. As for the Panama City franchise, it changed major league affiliations numerous times, but during Bill Brightwell's career, the Flyers were the farm team for the Detroit Tigers. Now